tonight we look at a problem which is very much back in the headlines, gun crime. As more people fall victim to gun crime, we talk to one member of the criminal world where firearms have become a tool of the trade. You name it, you get it. You have the money, price is right, still. You yourself, were you ever shot at? Yes. Why do you think you were shot at? Can't answer that question. After the crime and the media glare fades, it's the families of victims left to pick up the pieces. We hear from one family shattered by gun crime. I wanted to just die myself, and I know that's a terrible thing to say when you have two young babies, but it was just, I was torn while I was torn into, it was, it was hell. And we meet the legitimate gun community, asking, are the current gun laws sufficient? And are the laws we have being enforced? And superintendents should meet with the clubs twice every year. Are they doing that? They haven't met a single club since 2006. How bad is the problem of gun crime? What effect is it having on our society? And what can be done to at least control it? I'll be discussing all those issues with our panel of guests. They will also reflect on the violent events of recent times. Shot. It could have been anyone's door that got shot, you know. The victim here was a young and innocent girl in the wrong place at the wrong time. James Hughes, a 35-year-old GAA player from Cross McLean in County Armagh, died after shots were fired into a taxi in which he was a passenger. Just after one o'clock this morning, a lone gunman entered the Kapanua pub here on Barry Road in Finglas. The gunman opened fire with a handgun, hitting his victim multiple times. The victim is believed to have been in the sitting room at the front of the house and was struck in the upper body by the gunshot. the wrong time basically you know like oh god like where's it going to end where are they getting these guns from that's what i'd like to know and we will not be intimidated in the mixed city we will not set the agenda for us and we will not allow you to succeed under any circumstances. This gangland war is going on. It's just outrageous and nobody knows how to tackle this. Cherish his memory and let it live on. Smile, open your eyes, love and go on. Michael O'Toole, crime correspondent with the Star newspaper, sociologist Neil Horrigan, has written a seminal work on crime and social exclusion in Limerick, and Maura Devine, a counsellor from Tala who works closely with families who have been intimidated by gangs. You can join the conversation on Twitter, hashtag TV3Guns. Michael, I suppose if proof were ever needed that there's a problem with gun crime in this particular country, we just have to look at the events of the past few hours where we saw Barry Doyle convicted of the murder of Shane Gagan. We heard a member of the criminal fraternity in that report say, you name it, you get it. Is it as easy as that? It is easy to get guns in Ireland. There are two main ways that criminals get their hands on guns. Firstly, they rob uh, legitimate uh, firearms holders, mostly shotguns and hunting rifles. But increasingly in the last five or six years, most of the guns used by hardcore gangs have come in on drug shipments. So the famous Glock semi-automatic pistol, for example, which seems to be the weapon of choice 
of criminals. They are sent in by drugs gangs from abroad with drug shipments. Okay, but looking at the case, uh, for example, in Limerick, and there have been many cases throughout the country, but the Shane Gagan case, what is striking about this is the youth, 26 years of age. Is that becoming more common now? Is that the norm with, with young fellas with guns going out to kill? Yes. Um, when Barry Doyle killed Mr. Gagan, it was in November 2008, and he was 23. Uh, so even at that stage, he was not the youngest killer that we have in Ireland. There are people who are 19, 18, who are involved in gun crime. So you don't have to be a certain age to be involved in this. And I think criminals do use uh, younger people. But this, for Mr. Doyle, Barry Doyle, that was actually his first shooting, never mind his first killing. So he was a rookie killer, I suppose, and he was being blooded in that case. But there, there are people significantly younger than he was who are involved in killings. And if you have studied this extensively, can you point to any one thing, or is it just multifaceted, the reasons why so many young men in particular are getting involved in gun crime? Is it as a result of the ease of getting the weapons? Is it the bravado, uh, the macho uh, element of it? What is it? It's a combination of factors. Um, essentially, I mean, if, if we look at the young men who are sliding into gang activity and gun crime being a central part of that, in the context that I've looked at, um, you would have two scenarios. In one scenario, you would have uh, guys who would be related, either in kind of closely or sometimes quite on the kind of outer rims of kinship groups or family groups. And through that, they kind of get recruited into the activity. But you also get kids who are very disadvantaged and extremely neglected. And they're vulnerable to being sucked into crime as well. And of course, one of the ways in which people get recruited is through themselves becoming addicts and through that they get they get sucked into the criminal activity. I mean, one of the things that I looked at in Limerick is as as young boys in particular get older, you know, the, the, the kind of tasks that they'd ask, be asked to do would become more advanced and kind of gun crime comes in really at what we would call the foot soldier stage in terms of gang activity. And in that sense, that's that's why that age group in the sense that Barry Doyle committed that would be quite a typical age for somebody to be involved in this kind of activity. Okay. Another tragic story was that of uh, Melanie McCarthy McNamara um, and Maura you're, you're familiar with with that case and, and the intimidation in the area and the problems in the area. What struck me about that case was it was uh, the local community weren't really that um, astonished that it happened. They were shocked, but they weren't amazed. They had expected or anticipated something like that would happen. Is that reasonable enough to say? Yes, I think it is. Um, I've been on the ground there, I suppose, for the last 11 months, and over that time, I've assisted families who've been extreme intimidation, subject to extreme intimidation. The likes of quite new to me um, move out of their homes because of this. Well, well, These well, are young, you describe exactly what you mean by the families, level of intimidation. These are young families, often single women, parents, whose children, maybe you're talking 13, 14 years of age, have got in some way involved in the, the, the gangs in the area. And they've been asked to store drugs, pass drugs around, store other weapons. Um, the mothers have obviously tried to rein in their children. Uh, these are responsible parents. And what's happened is you're labelled a rat. Um, you stood outside your home, gangs are standing outside your home, you will never dry your curtains. I mean, you live in the dark for, for years on end. Um, you'll never dry your curtains to let the daylight in. You will find a gun in your garden. You will be, uh, your walls will be daubed. Um, that sort of level of severe intimidation, which has ended up in, in the last few months, I've um, helped four families, and it's been a midnight flit because they've had to get out. It has escalated to breaking point and it's been too dangerous for them to stay around. Okay, so I suppose we'll ask the question now, just how easy is it to get uh, your hands on a gun? Our Southern correspondent, Paul Byrne, has been speaking to someone who should know, a prominent drug dealer in the Munster area. The man I met, who's a Munster-based drug dealer, said people can now get their hands on a gun quicker than they can have a pizza delivered to their homes. You know me, you get it. The money, price is right, still. If you need a gun badly, you get it. Many of the weapons used in shootings here have either been shipped in, stashed in a consignment of drugs, or stolen, usually from farmhouses. Something on the money? Lock, chain gun, JK, what is it? Shotgun, solo, dumbbells, side by side. Your name is there. 
the guns that are out there, I mean, have they been used in crime or these clean? Can you get up the ones and clean ones? When you say dirty, tell me what you mean. When I said up the, they have been used. If you caught your phone for everything that happens with, has happened with. What's have to be done with the gun? Everything goes back to you. Gangland figures trust no one, and if double crossed, owed money, or sold out to the Gardaí, then that person becomes a target. You must be prepared to suffer the consequences if you have a man in your back. And if you get out of line, that's it. You may be able to capitalize on it. You yourself, have you ever paid to have somebody shot? No. You yourself, were you ever shot at? Yes. Why do you think you were shot at? Can't answer that question. You obviously owed somebody money, you crossed somebody's path? No. But there must be a reason that you were shot. I wasn't shot, I was shot at. Why do you think you were shot at? Can't go with that information. Are there hitmen in Cork for hire or do they come from outside? They're all over the place, you get them in any corner. People out there today, what kind of money is on their heads? Mm, 20 grand, 20 grand, 15 grand. Did you fuck up your dead? Are you prepared to, to be shot? Are you prepared to be taken out? If I do, that's it. You have to do nothing about these things. The one you don't feel coming, the one you don't feel at all. Paul Byrne there, our southern uh, correspondent with that report. Uh, Neve, it, it strikes me that the weapons in circulation at the moment now have become far more sophisticated. There was the time of the sawn off shotgun, so presumably, as uh, Michael alluded to earlier, there was uh, significant numbers coming in, shipments, heroin shipments, drug shipments. Is it though really as easy as was pointed out in, in the report to pick up a phone, know a guy in a corner, yeah, we can deliver that in 24 hours? Well, of course, if you look at gang type activity, and Limerick would be a context where you could see this, that even before the big drugs boom of the 1990s and the 2000 periods, you know, there was violence in those communities that didn't involve uh, guns. Um, I suppose one of the things that we see happening with the drugs boom is that drugs and guns become essentially linked commodities, that the, the two of them are kind of traded together, they're, they're in, the, in, in the mix together. Um, one of the things that I came across in Limerick, and, and it kind of goes back to what Maura was saying, is that scenarios in particular where maybe a gun was used in a particular incident and then a, a, an innocent party or a, a younger person is asked to take care of that gun or destroy the gun. And that's a way in which a lot of innocent people on the kind of perimeters uh, can get sucked <laughs> in or drawn in to, to the kind of broader web of gang activity. And it, it's very difficult, I think, sometimes for parents of these communities who have maybe a, a, a son or daughter who's at risk to keep them out even at that level of kind of just storing a weapon that might have been used for something. One, one thing in relation to gun crime, uh, if you speak to Gardaí, experienced Gardaí, they would say that 10, 15 years ago criminals would have what they call a straightener, which would be a fight, and they would maybe bring a knuckle duster or a baseball and bat. And progress to the knife. Yeah, progress to the knife, but now, and then progress to shotguns, now they're going and getting clocks. So it's not easy for you or for me to get guns. But people who have connections to criminals, they can get guns quite readily, and they do use them for quite petty, to settle quite petty rows. Well, Maury, you, you were um, uh, talking to us just before coming on air about the, the police activity in the area, uh, undercover, armed guardy, etc. How can they still operate in terms of the intimidation, in terms of getting the guns around and passing them uh, to and fro with relative ease? There is, um, I mean, I'm on the Joint Policing Commission, and that question is constantly being asked. It's not been answered, I suppose, but I know that the Gardaí have increased significantly the undercover and the obvious uh, guards on, on the on the beat, uh, on the on patrol. The, they have raided several of the gang, non-gang members, um, and consistently they come up clean. There's, there, there, there's bafflement, I think, at that. Um, there's also the idea that this is overwhelming and this at some stage is going to happen like the murder of that young girl last week. Well, presumably the Gardaí would be saying as long as the communities remain under the thumb, as it were, of the criminal fraternity in the local areas and no information is going up the line, it'll never be resolved. Is, is that the case that, you know, having community guards in areas, so-called socially marginalised areas, is a waste of time because there's no interaction? No, there is good interaction with the community. Good morning. Price is right, still. You, you.
yourself, were you ever shot at? Yes. Why do you think you were shot at? Can't answer that question. After the crime and the media glare fades, it's the families of victims left to pick up the pieces. We hear from one family shattered by gun crime. I wanted to just die myself, and I know that's a terrible thing to say when you have two young babies, but it was just, I was torn while I was torn into, it was, it was hell. And we meet the legit. They will also reflect on the violent events of recent times. Shot. It could have been anyone's start that got shot, you know. The victim here was a young and innocent girl in the wrong place at the wrong time. gun community asking, are the current gun laws sufficient and are the laws we have being enforced? The superintendents should meet with the clubs twice every year. Are they doing that? They haven't met a single club since 2006. How bad is the problem of gun crime? What effect is it having on our society? And what can be done to at least control it? I'll be discussing all those issues with our panel of guests. Good evening and welcome to this new special. Tonight we look at a problem which is very much back in the headlines, gun crime. As more people fall victim to gun crime, we talk to one member of the criminal world where firearms have become a tool of the trade. You name it, you get it. Long time. James Hughes, a 35-year-old GAA player from Cross McLean in County Armagh, died after shots were fired into a taxi in which he was a passenger. Just after one o'clock this morning, a lone gunman entered the Kapanua pub here on...